Välkommen till Aktiedagen. Vi eh, jobbar vidare i programmet och kommer att eh, lyssna på ett spelbolag. Och det är Jumpgate som precis har bytt namn från eh, Three Gates. Så vi säger varmt välkommen till vd Don Geier. Välkommen Don. Good to, good to be here. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Where are you great. at the moment? <laughs> we're, uh, we're in Visby right now. In so, Visby, yeah, all we're right. Still here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But are you ready to uh, give us some uh, information about Jumpgate? Absolutely. Okay, I'll, I'll leave more. the stage for you. Thank you. Okay, great. Yep, as she said, my I'm I'm Don Geyer, CEO of Jumpgate. Um, we just uh, changed our name from Three Gates and uh, became a concern. We've been acquiring companies. Um, you know, for the last year uh, and then actively seeking new companies. Uh, first, talk a little bit about our, our most recent acquisition. This this sort of just became finalized at EGM at the end of February, uh, where we added Game Excite, a Hamburg-based German game developing company that we're very excited to have on board. Um, after this acquisition, you know, we've now become over 45 team members. With you know 36 employees, we have three full game studios, uh, 30 released games. You know, and and one of the things that Game Excite really helped bring is they have a quite experienced um, live operations team, which is really important uh, for the way we're going. You know, we have a really experienced publishing team already at Tivola, um, and the team at Game Excite kind of helps that and bolsters that up uh, with another expertise, more focused on. Uh, social games and and uh, games of that nature. So I think we're really we're really excited about this uh, level up that we we just did and the name change and the focus to to be a concern uh, of a, a group of companies. So um, just to talk first about Game Excite, which is our you know our our newest acquisition of it, obviously. Um, their focus is on Asterix and Friends, a village building uh, social game that has been very successful. Um, the numbers sort of speak for themselves. It's it's quite an old game. It has uh, 8 million uh, different villages have been built within the game. So there's obviously very popular. Uh, it, it's been around for over six years and it has a ton of players that that are return players. And so what, what Game Excite has been focused on is basically porting the existing game engine over to Unity. And what this will do is it allow the live operations team to uh, manage the game better, to, be, to have more engaging features for the players. But it'll also, at the same time, they're going to be introducing some new features to the game. And, and what will, this will do is you know, engage new players, bring in new players um, as, a, as a bit of stroke of, of, um, of luck. Uh, Netflix has has opened up a lot of the Asterix movies in Europe just just at the perfect timing. So this is also like allowing people to have more access to the Asterix IP, which we think is a very strong IP. Um, and and uh, this port over to Unity has been got, been ongoing by the team, you know, across several platforms, and they're you know looking for the full relaunch coming up in the next couple of months here. So I mean they're working on that right now very hard. Um, it's been a very positive, uh, very positive, you know, working with with uh, everybody at Game Excite. They really know what they're doing, and we think that they know how to take take good care of players. And uh, I think one of the things that you really notice in, in what they're doing with Asterix and Friends is they really, you know, have attention to detail. They know how to manage a game, uh, and that's something that we're really excited to have on board. Uh, in addition to that, they're also planning a new game with the same IP. So. They'll be working on and planning and starting uh, a new Asterix and Friends IP. We, we don't have too much information and we don't want to give too much away. Uh, we'll let them uh, come up with the, with the details on that. But so that's, that's planned and in the works right now. So not only will be sort of relaunching Asterix and Friends, the village building game that's already successful, but they'll be also making an, a second game with the Asterix and Friends IP coming in the future. So that's just something we're really looking forward to at our new studio, Game Excite. And then we have uh, basically the flagship and, and uh, or at least the mothership of the company is, is, is with uh, Tivola. And uh, Tivola, you know, it, it's, um, it's thing, companies like this don't grow in trees in the game business. It's been around for 25 years. You, um, 
you can't just build a brand uh, in in a year or two like like Tivola has done over 25 years. So they have a very loyal audience. They have um, developers that know that audience very well. They have a, a very experienced publishing team that uh, knows how to take care of the players that love their games. Um, and for this reason, you know, this is they have 125 million downloads, which is you know a massive amount. Um, and not only that, they have 15 million organic downloads a year. And for those who don't know what an organic download is, an organic download is is basically when players just search online and come and you know install your game without you having to buy users or do user acquisition. So it's the absolute best kind of user to have. Um, I think one of the things that makes Tivola have so many of these organic downloads is the fact that they they really you know have built up a relationship over the years with their audience, and the developers and the publishers know that audience very well. Um, Tivola has a very, I guess you would say, uh, aggressive or you know the 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 timing of the games is coming at a high rate this year. So we have four games coming out. Um, First of all, we have a game called Pet Ventures. Pet Ventures is due to come out in, in, in a few weeks. It's slated to go Q1. And these, you know, obviously, um, you know, with all games, it's it's a dynamic uh, date and, and period. So you you're you're, you know, as the game gets finished, you're looking to um, get features and you're dealing with Apple and Google and 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 all kinds of different moving parts, but the game is playing very well, and we're looking forward to Pet Ventures coming out very soon. So that's very exciting. Um, after that, we'll be, you know, they're doing a couple third-party games as well, but they're also doing another in-house game. So I, I guess what I should mention is Tivla Games is is really sort of it has a history as a publisher, and currently they're they're working with two development teams in-house making new games. They also have a development team that just manages the portfolio. So they're quite a big organization. Um, but the second game that they'll be coming out with this year is a game called Wild Shade. It's a horse racing game. Um, it's um, playing very fun right now. So we're also very excited about that. And, you know, it's, it's, um, we're looking forward to show some, some exciting tidbits from that game. So I think, you know, one of the things that gives uh, Jumpgate as a whole the strength uh, is sort of Tivola, the fact that we have these users. We're sort of focused on this target group that is um, really, really the the bread and butter of that of that Tivola, Tivola portfolio. In addition, we also have Table Flip, and Table Flip is is uh, a studio working here in Visby. Um, it's working primarily on a hidden object game for Tivola called Hid Hidden Animal Rescue. So this game will be coming out in, in uh, Q3, Q2, Q3 of this year. Um, and uh, so they'll, Tivola is working you know, very close with, with the studio on that. Um, one of the other products they're working on is Project Blue Book, which we've released. Um, as we recently announced, we also have a PC version of that game coming out. So we'll have more information about that coming out shortly as well as um, talking about asteroids and some other projects we're working on. So at Table Flip and Visby, there's, there's a variety of projects. Um, there, you know, it has a history of doing different work for higher projects and having a high technical prowess doing firefighting for other studios. But right now we're, we're really focused on trying to get some really good products and beef up that uh, Tivola portfolio. So here is our, our basic release schedule. And, and, and I just want to emphasize that, you know, all release schedules are, are they're, they're dynamic and, and, uh, and uh, are subject to sort of change and, and work with how, how Apple and Google uh, work, you know, can fit you in to get features. I think Tivola is, the Tivola publishing team is one of the best I know at getting features with Apple and Google. And one of the things that's obviously very important is is basically free advertising. So we're going to let them work their magic, and and uh, so we're looking forward to those games as soon as they coming coming out. But we have Animal World coming out, Animal World that is now called Pet Ventures. That's the official name uh, coming out, in, you know, very soon. Then we have Asterix and Friends, the Unity version, coming out also in Q2. Then we have the Hidden Animal Rescue uh, done here by. Uh, 
Table Flip Studios, um, but will be published by Tivola. And then we have Wild Shade as well in the, in the, the third quarter, the horse racing game. And, and uh, I think um, after playing that game, I think we're all very excited about what it could do. So we're looking forward to, to all the releases in, in uh, this year. Um, having mentioned that, um, one, of, one of the most interesting things and, and uh, main uh, additions to, to having these uh, two studios in Hamburg is that there's access to uh, German regional funding. And, and this has been um, you know, very, very helpful uh, to our bottom line and to increase the production value that we can provide and, and the amounts of entertainment we can give uh, the players at the end of the day when we do these games. So in 2020, both Tivola and Game Excite uh, received the German funding money for previous projects, uh, Pet Ventures and the Asterix and Friends um, you know, port over to Unity. In 2021, uh, I think we've already we you know we've already mentioned that we're looking for funds and and that process is a little bit further along. So I mean it, we're looking to have t a game both from Asterix and Friends and a game from Tivola uh, with match money that's uh, funded from the from the uh, German regional funding system. So I think that's um, I, I don't want to say it's free money, but it's very important because it really can double up and, and really boost the development team to mean that you can deliver high quality. And, and that's really important to us. And I think especially for both the Asterix brands and the Tivola audience. So we're looking forward to, you know, being part of that German funding and uh, having some extra money to develop our games. All right, sort of changing gears now. Um, we, you know, we've done, we've gone through, a, a, um, I guess you would say a complete restructure. Um, we have a, a very, I guess, aggressive uh, a, a way of looking at acquisitions. I mean, we're very, we're looking to bolster the team, especially teams with good people. And one of the things we want to just sort of go through now is our management team. I think the main new addition is is Harold. Uh, you know, Harold Riegler, we've worked with for a long time. I've, I've known him for you know over a decade. He's uh, recently, you know. Uh, exited his, his studio, Purple M Studios, and sold that to Embracer. So congratulations to him on that. But we're mostly excited to have him now as our chief product officer for Jumpgate. So he's overlooking all our products and helping us with our release schedule and working all this out and consulting in all these bases. And I guess you would say working most closely with Tivola at the moment. Um, but uh, as we move forward, he'll be looking over all the products that we released for the entire concern. So we're really glad to have Harold on board for that. This is a quick look at our sort of executive management structure and the structure of our team. So, you know, this is our board, which is, has a lot of people that have been recently exited, you know, Matt from Rovio and Martin from Simplegon to Microsoft. We have Victor, our chairman, who's, you know, very, very good at uh, helping us with financing and, and doing these mergers and acquisitions. Acquisitions are, are, are fun and exciting, but they're also a lot of work. Um, and also Christopher Lowe helps us with that. So this is just sort of a look at our, 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 the structure of our team that sort of supports uh, where we're gonna be going in the future. I mean, what we're looking to do is, you know, really, you know, go out there and find things that can supplement and help our current portfolio. So if you're, if you're a company out there that's looking to join a group, please take a look at us. So what, what's our main focus is when it comes to acquisitions? Um, I, I guess everyone, you know, when they look at acquisitions wants companies that are doing great, then they want them cheap. And that's not always how it works out. But I think, for, you know, in our case, we're looking for, for you know, game companies that have a, a strong cash flow, that have some kind of stability and, and a consistent revenue stream. We're not really looking to go fund um, companies that you know need a few million crowns or a few million dollars to finish their game and be you know and be part owners. We're looking for someone who has more of a standalone capability. Um, uh, obviously, it's a huge bonus if it's a good synergy with either Game Excite or Tivola. Um, we we are you know looking to always add licenses or publish more games through Tivola and through Game Excite. We think both those entities have the experience and the know-how uh, to publish both third-party or new, new acqu newly acquired games and companies. So I think, you know, that's another thing we're looking for. I, I, I think, you know, we talk to so many companies right now 
Um, you know, I think we really like teams that have an experienced development team, a team that can, you know, has some ability to scale up and scale down. I think that's just part of being a good game company and being able to survive in the, in the current environments. So, I mean, these are the kind of kind of acquisition targets we're, we're focused on. So a lot of questions that I get is, you know, how are you, um, how do you look for acquisitions? You know, it's Corona, it's been um, less than ideal, a year and a half, I guess we would all agree. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, one of the ways that we, we do it is meet to match. So in, in the game conference world, almost every conference has some kind of meet to match system where you're, you're focused on, you know, going to the conference and looking, but then you go and you have, you know, 15 or 20 meetings uh, in, in a little room, sort of like speed dating. And, and these systems now have kind of gone over to digital. So, you know, we, we have Martin, uh, who's, uh, you know, on our board and, and quite good at this, out there looking for companies for us. And then we're also actively looking through just our networks. So we have, you know, uh, Matt and Harold and, and a lot of people that know, know a lot of what's going on in the game industry, their ears to the ground. So, you know, we're out actively seeking through conferences, through Meet to Match. We're, we're you know, calling our network, finding out who, who, who knows what's going on and if anything uh, is interesting that is a good fit for us. So we're always out there looking. I think we have more meetings than we can take. So at this point, uh, it's not slowing us down to be uh, for the most part, uh, travel free and home and digital. So, so far we've been able to have access to a lot of targets, a lot of interesting targets. And I guess I would just mention that, you know, we're looking at targets just about it or meeting them just about every day. So it's a lot, a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of reconfiguration in, in the game industry. There's a lot of opportunity. So I think we all know that game companies are quite hot since Corona has come around. The sales are up, revenues are up. Activity is up, but at the same time, development times are a little bit slower. It's it's um, sometimes harder to connect. So there there are difficulties within development, but for the industry as a whole, it's been a very um, a very uh, I guess you would say good time. So I, I think at this point that concludes what we have to present today, and I think we'll be happy to take some questions. Thank you so much, Don. That was a lot of interesting topics you, you gave us there. Uh, could you uh, give us a little bit, uh, I mean, you changed your name like the, the, 9th, the 9th of March from Free yep. Gates to Jump Gate. And the reason for this is to better reflect your business in what you call the new company. So uh, I have to ask, what was wrong with the old one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing was wrong with the old one. I, I, I think we were had the identity of as, as a game studio, and that's not really what we are anymore. We're a concern of game studios and game publishers. Yeah. And we're 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 looking to expand and and uh, you know broaden our horizons. I, I think you know the old gaming model is you start a studio and you know this comes from a decade ago and you raise money and you make a game for a few years and you hope that game sells well and that's that's not a very good business model. Um, so you know what we've moved over to is a model where we sort of can have a steady revenue stream, um, a predictable future, and we want to keep adding um, adding companies and adding revenue streams into that into the concern so that we you know can get more shots on goal and of course we're still looking for you know the big hits uh, but at the same time we want to do it in a measured way and we want to lower risk and increase our revenue streams yeah uh, also when you consider uh, the background of your chairman uh, Victor Mudig it uh, becomes clear that he's not really uh, from the gamer sector uh, he's uh, has a very uh, he seems to be a very experienced within uh, several businesses but he's been working for Tetis Oil, uh, and he has worked as a lawyer, and he also sits uh, on the board of a, of a Norwegian energy company. So, uh, could you uh, give us a little bit? Um, what are his strengths? Would you say? It's always well, I mean, a bit delicate uh, to talk about your chairman, <laughs> but uh, feel free. <laughs> 
No, yeah, no. I mean, Victor has a lot of strengths that are really a, a super important part of our, you know, of Jumpgate. And and you know, I think you know he has a measured response. He he knows the world of finance. He knows uh, um, he has a good you know network in, within investors, um, and he he knows how to do a lot of the complications of, for example, you know, acquiring companies uh, internationally. That that doesn't just ha- you know that's not trivial. It is a lot of work. It's not necessarily complex, but there's a lot of little, a lot of boxes to check. So I think you know he's a strength both in guidance, um, uh, you know, to help us make the right financial decisions, to try and create stability, um, and and also to sort of expand in a measured way. So I think you know his strengths come in you know his investor network and his his knowledge of basically growing businesses and scaling them up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, one of your acquisitions, Tivula Games, Games in Horses and Pets. You you seem <laughs> very very pleased when you talked about it, and you you seem very pleased about uh, with the the number of downloads and so mm-hmm. on. But did the acquisition as a whole did it meet with your expectations as well? And yeah, I think that too will be. To say? What, what... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, yeah, of course, you know, you know, we, we want to have a super hit, uh, you know, the, the second you buy anything. But I mean, no, it's it'll be one of the acquisitions that's hard to match. So, um, you know, we we got it at a very reasonable price. Um, it yeah. has, you know, as I said, there's it's a brand that some, you know, that's been built over 25 years. That's not something you can just normally go snatch. Uh, it's uh, it's you know. Something I, uh, has a very experienced team. You know, we're very pleased with working with them. We think the publishing team um, shows a lot of promise. There's the ability to scale up, and and you know, right now uh, we're we're very excited about the games coming out through Tivola. So yeah. not only the games in house they're developing, but you know, there's some other some other news that we we want to you know have coming out soon. But it, it's oh, really? you know, they're always awesome. looking. No, well, I mean, well, I guess what you know, it's a weird in the game industry. You never know exactly what's going to happen because you're talking to people all the time, and until something, until you sign on the dotted line, nothing is real. But I mean, I guess you're always looking for new and exciting products. And I, one of the reasons I really like working with Henrik and Sven and the team at Tivola is because they're, you know, they're looking for new games. I think they have a very good eye, and especially they have a good eye for this massive Tivola okay. audience that they are that well, they have. Well, it, it so. sure sounds as uh, if something is big is coming up very short in, within shortly. Or can we expect that? Or well, I mean, we we have games already in the pipeline yeah. that are very interesting. So, but, and we're expecting big things for those. Um, but you know, I, I guess you know, I'm not trying to say we have some big news on the horizon. That's not really it. I just what I mean is, you know, they're always looking for stuff and they're aggressive about yeah. it. They're not sitting back on their laurels. Okay, yeah, I won't they're looking for new things. Yeah. But already we have, you have a lot of things going on within uh, this year. I mean, you have the hidden animal rescue horse racing games, Asterix and Friends. And there are a few examples, but. When will we see uh, when those and other games are launched uh, this year? When will they start contributing to your turnover turnover in a significant way? I mean, is yeah. it from day one, or does it take some time? Or well, I mean, it's every game is different, and I mean, we have incredibly high hopes for these games, but we're also realistic. Um, the entire executive management team we've launched, you know couple i mean dozens and dozens hundreds of games altogether so you know every game you hope does well i mean in in general i think tivola games are going to ramp up uh, you know organically what what really helps is getting features and this is why tivola the publishing team at tivola is so great because they have such a good relationship with google and apple and are, and are quite successful getting features with uh, most of their games and game updates so i think you know we we have high hopes um you know we, in general, in mobile, the games start generating revenue a month or two after they're launched. And, you know, when you get a feature, you're going to get a spike in that revenue. Um, so, I mean, we're, we we don't control the features. We're definitely going to ask for them. Um, but that's about all we can say about that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and... Uh, uh... Talking, let's talk about the financial situation a little bit. Uh, your current liabilities amount to 16 million Swedish crowns. Uh, could you comment on that a little bit? 
I mean, I think, you know, our, our, our situation financially is, is that, you know, we, we have a fairly stable revenue stream and uh, that we can, you know, we can move along and, and go if we want to acquire more things or if we want to go out more aggressively and, and publish more games, you know, there might be that we'll, you know, add, add to it. We're not looking to really go build a huge war chest at this moment. We have so many games that we think that are going to draw in revenue. Uh, soon, yeah. so I think you know at this point we feel very confident that we're we you know we have a stability. Every quarter has has improved for a while now, and I think we're we're looking forward to you know this year so we can really you know start some really real revenue growth. Okay, so uh, what would you say? What are your main uh, risks at the, at the moment? Main risk, uh, yeah, I think. Well, I mean, risks. Uh, <laughs> there's always risks in the game industry. You shouldn't and I, laugh I think, when you talk about risks. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely, no. I, I think you know, the game industry is is um, is one that is volatile, and there's a lot of different chances. Uh, games become huge hits that no one expected, and other games that everyone expected to be hits. Uh, don't do so well. I think, you know, we have a lot of shots on goal this year. So I, I'm feeling very, very good about that. Uh, there, There's always risk of small delays. There's always risk um, of bad timing with games. Um, there's always risk of, of, of complications. Uh, I mean, these are, these are the main things that you worry about. Um, I think with launches like these, we're looking for sort of uh, stable growth. Uh, so they're much less risky than if you say went out and spent a lot of money to build a console game and then you try and sell it. And if it doesn't do good right off the bat, then you're dead. So we're we're sort of out of that. These games that we're launching through Tivola, they're looking to be sort of steady revenue streams, but monthly over time. So I think it's you know that's I I guess delays would be the biggest. If you need an answer, what's the risky thing? It's it's delays. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you. That, that was that's yeah. perfect. So, uh, uh, can you just say something about your investment case here? Uh, wrap it up a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, you know we're we're at a place um, where I feel like you know we're 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 at. <sighs> what would I say? I I would say. You know, Jumpgate right now is at a point where we have a lot of a lot of shots on goal. We have a lot of things in the pipeline. When one of those hits, there's no turning back. So I think you know, we think we're a bargain. We think we're undervalued um, uh, just because of all the pipe the pipeline you know that we have coming up. We have so many games coming out, and the second uh, something gets traction and the revenue starts to go up, uh, then there's no turning back. So I mean, that's sort of how we're looking at it. We're we're obviously, you know, you know, looking to build our investor base. We want people that are excited and want to follow us and and want to engage and know what we're doing. Um, we're we're doing everything in our power to, to you know, to make the company as stable as possible, but then also be able to take these shots on goal for the big hits. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, good luck with all your. Uh future plans it sounds sounds uh, amazing i think so take care and talk to you later bye bye all right thank you very much thank Linda. you bye bye <laughs>